Well, it's official. Tomorrow is the big day. Now being 39 weeks pregnant, the very last thing I wanna do is do the dishes. So today I'm gonna to be sharing with you 10 of the easiest one pot meals to just cut back on as many dishes as possible. Now I've been reflecting a little bit about all of the lasts. Now there are good things and there are bad things. One of the lasts I'm kind of excited for is that this will be my last night eating these delicious things to keep my heart burned down. This will also be my last time having Braxton Hicks contractions, which sometimes they're confusing. You're just wondering all the time, am I in labor? Am I in labor? No. Not labor, Braxton Hicks. But the one thing I am going to miss the most are these little tiny baby movements and little hiccups. But I am super excited for all the firsts that are gonna come with this new little baby and my little family. Now if you want updates of the baby, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. I'm gonna be putting a few things in the community tab so you'll be able to find pictures and other things there that I'll be sharing. But while I'm gone, my cute sisters and mom are going to be taking over the YouTube for about a month. So make sure you come by, say hi. They're still going to be making super easy recipes so you guys can get dinner on the table. All right, I've been talking quite a bit, so let's just jump into these recipes. The first recipe I'm making is our Instant Pot French Dip Sandwiches. So you're gonna take your Instant Pot, put in either a pork roast or a beef roast, it works either way. Then you're gonna add two cups of your favorite beef broth or if you can find beef consomme, that's the best. Then you're gonna put your lid on, make sure that little knob is turned to sealing, not venting. Push the pressure cook button and you're gonna cook it for an hour. Now I like to let this sit for a few hours before I open the lid, then it will make your meat nice and tender to shred apart. Next, you're gonna add your shredded meat onto like a, a hoagie bun. I even use hot dog buns. You can have provolone cheese. I like to melt it or broil it in the oven for a few minutes. Then when you're all the way done, I like to dip it back into the juice. It's my favorite. The next recipe is Instant Pot Cracked Chicken. So I'm gonna start with three frozen chicken breasts. You can use thawed if you want to. I'm doing frozen. I'm adding one cup of water on top putting my lid on, make sure that the knob is turned to sealing, not venting, and I'm gonna push manual. Now you can push pressure cook button if you have that kind, but this model is manual button. Now frozen, I'm gonna go up to 25 minutes to cook my frozen chicken. If you have thawed chicken, you can do 15 to 20 minutes. Now when your Instant Pot is done counting down and it beeps, go ahead and turn the knob over to venting or quick release. And then when all of the pressure's out, you can go ahead and lift the lid up. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and drain the liquid out of my pot, and then I'm going to shred my chicken. Now you can shred it with forks, you can shred it with a knife. Um, these are the bear claws, I just get them on Amazon, they're called bear claws, and they are my new favorite tool, I got these for Christmas. Now when you're done shredding the chicken, go ahead and put it back into your Instant Pot. Now my Instant Pot is still on warm, I didn't turn it off or anything, so I can mix everything in. So you have one packet of ranch dressing, eight ounces of cream cheese. Now I cubed mine so they would melt a little bit faster. A little bit of green onions, depending on how much you like. I love green onions. And then I cooked six pieces of turkey bacon. You could use like the pre-cooked bacon, whatever bacon you like, about six pieces and then just chop them up. Now we're going to just mix this up. The chicken should still be really hot and the pot will still be warm. So you just keep stirring and the cream cheese will melt, I promise you that. Now while this cracked chicken was cooking, I cooked some egg noodles on the stove top to make my life a little bit easier. So I just put my cracked chicken on top of my egg noodles. Now if you don't want egg noodles, you can eat this just plain or on top of salad. It is so delicious and so versatile, you're gonna love it. Up next is our ravioli bake. I love this because you throw everything, cook it, done. So you're gonna take a jar of spaghetti sauce. You're gonna put about a half a cup down onto the bottom of a nine by 13 pan. Next, you're gonna add frozen raviolis. You can find this in almost every grocery store in the frozen section. You're gonna do a line of raviolis, then you're gonna add a little bit more sauce on top. Spread that around a little bit, and then we're gonna add another layer of raviolis. 
finish putting the rest of your spaghetti sauce on top and then we're going to top it off with your favorite cheese. I like to use mozzarella cheese on this recipe. You can use about a cup to two cups, whatever you like. Now you're going to go ahead and put it in the oven, preheat your oven to 350 degrees, cook it for about 30 minutes or just until the cheese is melted and that ravioli is cooked all the way through. This recipe is so easy that even on busy nights I can get my 13 or 11 year old to help make it, bake it, and then serve. Our next recipe is our barbecue baked salmon. I love this because you can make it with the barbecue sauce and also add some vegetables on the side too, cook it all at the same time. So I take a foil lined cookie sheet and put my salmon on it. Now you can use all kinds of salmon sizes on here. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper on top. Then you're gonna add your favorite barbecue sauce. I like to use Sweet Baby Ray's on this one because it's not as liquidy and I just feel like it tastes so much better. Then you're gonna put it in the oven at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. I like to keep checking my salmon to make sure that it's cooked all the way through, but usually 20 minutes will even get the thick areas. Now I like to serve mine over rice with a little bit of barbecue sauce on the side. Next is our Hawaiian barbecue chicken. So you're gonna start with two to three pounds of chicken breasts. Now these are chicken tenders. You can use chicken breasts. I would use about three chicken breasts, but here I'm using about nine chicken tenders. Next, you're gonna grab a can of pineapple and you're gonna dump the juice and the pineapple in. Then you're gonna add about a cup to a cup and a half of your favorite barbecue sauce. And that is it. You're gonna put your lid on. Now make sure that it's closed all the way and your little knob is turned to ceiling. Push the pressure cook or manual button and I'm going up to 20 minutes because it's frozen chicken tenders. If it's a frozen chicken breast, you go to 25 minutes. All right, once it's done, I switched the knob to a quick release and took the lid off. Now everything is cooked all the way through. So I like to shred my chicken in my pot because then I want it to absorb those juices. I'll let it sit in there for about 10 minutes before serving. Now you can serve this over rice. I have an Instant Pot rice recipe for you or my new favorite thing is to get Costco cauliflower rice in the freezer section and I just serve it on top of that. So dinner is literally ready in about 25 minutes. Up next is our Instant Pot beef barbacoa. Now you can make this in the Instant Pot or in the slow cooker, whatever you have. So this recipe, even though it looks like there are a lot of ingredients, there's actually a lot of spices. So this, it really is so simple, but it tastes amazing with everything put together. So let's get started. We're going to push the saute button and we're gonna wait till this is all heated up. It will say hot when it's ready to go and then we're gonna continue on. All right, so now that it's hot, we're gonna add about two tablespoons of olive oil just to the bottom of your pot. Now, once that's kind of heated up, the olive oil's all on the bottom of your pot, we're gonna add some beef. So this is a chuck roast that we've cut up into pieces and we're going to just brown it on both sides just quickly. Okay, so once it's browned on one side, then try your best to just flip it over. You're gonna try and brown it at least on two sides. Okay, so once they're all just a little bit browned, I mean, they're not gonna be all the way cooked through and they're not gonna be browned on every side, but just a little bit, then it's time to move on. So we're gonna just put everything else in. So we're gonna start with a half a can, or I guess a half a cup of red enchilada sauce. I'm just gonna do half a can, just to make it easy. Then we're gonna add two cans of these green chilies. You can leave the liquid in there. Okay, now these are called chipotle peppers in adobo sauce. Now they're really hot. If you guys like the heat, you can add a few chopped up, but because my kids don't love the heat, I just chopped up one and I'm just gonna just dump it in just to give it a little bit of spice and a little bit of flavor. Okay, now we're going to the spices. Okay, we're gonna dump in two tablespoons of lime juice. Now you can freshly squeeze it or just use the bottle. Whatever you like, whatever you prefer. One way or the other is not wrong. Then you're gonna have two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. That gives it a good taste. And then two tablespoons of brown sugar. Just dump that all in. Mix that around a little bit. Oh, it's already smelling so good. All right, so then we're gonna add two teaspoons of liquid smoke. Um, yeah. I love liquid smoke, that's one of my favorite things. So I would suggest not leaving the liquid smoke out. 
And then just one tablespoon of Worcestershire, Worcestershire, whatever you call it, that's what it is, one tablespoon of that. You're gonna mix that in just a little bit too. Okay, now it's to the spices. Now, if you don't have every single one of these spices, it will still taste amazing. So don't be intimidated by all these. If you have them, great, use them all. I suggest that. All right, so then we're gonna add one tablespoon of cumin. Just dump that in. And then one tablespoon of ground oregano. If you just have normal oregano, that's fine too. I kind of like it. Ground. All right, next we're gonna do one teaspoon of onion powder. And then one teaspoon of garlic powder. All right, next we're gonna do a half a teaspoon of chili powder, half a teaspoon of smoked paprika. Just dump that in real quick. Now don't worry, if <laughs> you're not writing all these down frantically, down below in the description, I'll put all the ingredients there for you, just to make it easy. And then last, we have a fourth teaspoon of garlic cloves. Now I know that sounds funny, but it tastes so good in this. So a fourth teaspoon garlic cloves, then a fourth teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Okay, we're gonna just mix this all together. Now there is enough liquid in here right now that it will pressurize. If you're a little nervous and if you get the burn notice a lot, you can always add about a half a cup more of liquid. But I personally think there's enough in here that we should be okay. All right, then we're also just gonna add two bay leaves just right on top while it cooks. Okay, let's get this lid on. All right. As you put your lid on, make sure it will do a little jingle, so that means you're doing it right. You're gonna make sure that little knob is on sealing, not venting. Then we're gonna push the cancel, because we're on saute right now and we don't wanna be on that anymore. So we're gonna push the cancel button. Then we're gonna push pressure cook. Because we've cut it up into small pieces and we've, we've sauteed it a little bit, you only have to cook it for 30 minutes. So we're just gonna go up with the plus button to 30. So after you're done setting the timer, you're gonna wait for just a little beep. Once it beeps, you can just walk away. All right, so it's all done cooking. Now I let it pretty much release on its own for a little bit, for about 10, 15 minutes. And then I'm gonna turn the little knob to venting or push the button to let all of the pressure out. Oh, perfect. Okay, once all the pressure's out, you can go ahead and lift up your lid. Oh man, it smells so good and just kind of mix it around. Now you can do a lot of different things with this. You can serve it over rice, you can put it in a tortilla. I personally like to eat it in a tortilla because yes, I love tortillas. So we're just gonna put a little bit in here. You can add cheese, you can add sour cream. Um, just make sure you kind of drain the juice out if you're doing a tortilla because it will be soggy if you don't. Um, the one thing I do love is adding a little bit of cilantro, even just a little bit of lime just right on top. Fold it up and you can eat it. Our next recipe is Instant Pot Chicken Alfredo. So to get started, you're gonna push the saute button and we're gonna let that heat up to hot. Yes, okay, so you'll just wanna add about two tablespoons of olive oil to the bottom of your Instant Pot. Now, can I show you my trick? Yes. I like to pick it up and kind of just like mix Ooh, it, yeah, make good. sure it and covers. Full coverage. Exactly. No sticking, no Perfect. burning here today. No, not today. <laughs> All right, then we're gonna add, this is about three pounds of chicken. Now you can see that we've kind of cut it into strips. Um, just, it will make it cook so much faster if it's cut smaller. Mm -hmm. And I like the, I like the strips with Alfredo, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you think of when you think of Alfredo, so. And I like doing it beforehand, because then after it's like, you're trying to shred hot chicken and it's like. Right. Once this is just cooked, it's just it's nice. It's just nice and easy. And done. Exactly. You can hear sizzle. Sizzle, sizzle. So how long do you saute the chicken for? So you're gonna do like three minutes okay. on each side. Okay. I'm trying to spread them out <laughs> as best I can. You're doing great. Thanks, thanks. Almost done here, here we go. Oop. Last, oop, last two, there we go. Okay, so we'll give them just a second, let them sit there. Okay. And then we'll just flip them over in about two to three minutes. So then just to season them up a little, we're just gonna do a little salt and pepper, just for taste, no direct measurement. 
Nah. And you know us, we usually just yeah. kind of eyeball things. We just wing it. That's how it works here. <laughs> Okay, they've been browned on both sides for about three minutes. So we're just gonna kind of stir them, stir them up a little bit. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna cook the pasta. So yes. let's add some of our stuff here. Okay, so we're gonna add one teaspoon of minced garlic. Nice. Okay, then we'll add one teaspoon of parsley into this. Nice, mix that around. Now I'm gonna hurry and turn off the saute button okay. if that's okay. Cancel. <laughs> oh, it smells good just it with the garlic smell in really there. Okay, mm. then let's add our pasta on top Kay. and then we'll add on the, the broth. So we're gonna add just like one pound of the pasta. Yeah. And then the secret of the pasta is we're just going to make sure that all the pasta is covered with liquid. So yes. right now, this is four cups of chicken broth that we're gonna put in here. Mm. Looks like we just need to add, yeah, you wanna measure that a little bit. We might need to add just a little bit more. It's just we, when your pasta's not touching the liquid, it's gonna get hard and crispy. Uh -huh. Yeah. We don't want that. We want, we want, want soft pasta. No. Pasta. Okay, how's that looking? Can Good. we pat the rest yeah. down? Perfect. I think we're ready now. Okay. Ready? Ready. Let's do it. You're gonna put on your lid. Now, if you have a little knob, make sure that it's turned to ceiling, not, not venting. venting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This one doesn't have a knob, so it automatically just sets onto ceiling. So you're good. So you're gonna push the pressure cook button or the manual button. And then we're gonna go down to four minutes because our chicken's pretty much cooked. We just gotta cook the noodles and we're ready to go. So once it's set, you can go ahead and walk away. All right, so once the timer is all done, you can go ahead and either turn your little knob to venting or with this Instant Pot, all you have to do is press the button now. So. Ready? Here we go. <laughs> okay, once the pressure is out, you can go ahead and safely take off the lid. Mm, smells good. It does smell good. So we're gonna mix it around. It looks like there's like a little bit excess water, yeah. but not too much. I feel like we're okay to just leave it as it is. Yeah. So, okay. Now we're gonna add the good stuff. We're gonna make the sauce. Yes, to this we're going to add cream cheese. And it's okay if it's still a little cold because it will all melt together with the hot pasta and the chicken. Right, so we'll and so that's like, that's in. the eight ounce block yes. of cream cheese. Okay, while you're gonna do that, I'm gonna okay. put in like a fourth cup of Parmesan. Mm. Nice. Do I mix it around and you put in the sure. next? Awesome. And then this is just one cup of mozzarella. Nice, love all this cheese. Yeah. I mean, Alfredo, I guess it does all cheese, <laughs> all good stuff. Now, if you want it to cook a little bit faster, you can push the saute button yes. and we'll heat things up a little bit more. Okay, this will take just a few minutes to melt all yes. our cheeses and cream cheese and everything. So you just keep at it, keep yeah. at it. So while we're waiting for it to, you know, melt, melt thicken up all a little bit, there. To help thicken it up, we're gonna take two tablespoons of water and then just one tablespoon, it's a half. We need two of them. So one tablespoon of cornstarch. And we're just going to mix it up a little bit and then put it in there with, while it's on saute to hopefully yes. it will it will thicken it right up yes. for us. Because we don't want liquidy chicken alfredo. No. We want thick, creamy chicken alfredo. There we go. All right, so we're just gonna stir this for a little bit until it's nice and thick. So everything is stirred together. It's creamy, it's thickening up. So I'm just we'll gonna, just yeah, turn this off. Turn, turn off our saute off. off. There we go. And then we're just gonna serve this up. Mm. And we like to serve this with just a little bit of basil on top. It just adds a really nice, fresh flavor to it all. You could also put a little bit more Parmesan on top yes. too. That's mm. one of my favorites. Never opposed to more cheese. <laughs> Never opposed to that. Especially with dealing with Alfredo. <laughs> yeah. And there it is, your finished product. Now this next recipe is another sheet pan recipe. It's our one pan chicken fajitas. The first thing we're gonna do is to lay the chicken tenders onto the sheet pan. Next, we're gonna add either taco seasoning or fajita seasoning, whatever you have. We're gonna add about half of the packet on top of the chicken. Next, I'm gonna take a jar of salsa. I love Herdez salsa. And we're just gonna sprinkle a little bit of salsa on top of the chicken also. 
Okay, so I cut up a yellow pepper and a red pepper, and then I also cut up an onion. Now you can do your onion in strips, but my kids don't really love onions, so I'm trying to hide them. So I did small pieces for my onions. Then we're just gonna pour this right on top of your chicken. You can do it in between, you can do it on top. It doesn't really matter. Now for the onions. Now I'm just gonna add the rest of the taco seasoning right on top, and then we're gonna drizzle everything with a little bit of olive oil. Okay, this is all ready to cook, so we're gonna cook it at 375 degrees for about 40 minutes. All right, when you're all done, you're just gonna take it and put it in a tortilla and add your most favorite toppings. Now I needed a soup in there because I love soup and they're all just one pot, so today I'm gonna show you how to make enchilada soup. So you're gonna start by putting two or three chicken breasts in the bottom of your Instant Pot. Now these are chicken tenders. You can use tenders or you can use chicken breasts. Now if you are making this in the slow cooker, you're gonna do the same exact thing that I do in my Instant Pot, except when it's cooking, you're gonna cook for six to eight hours on low. Next, you're gonna add two cloves of garlic. I also like to use the minced garlic, so it's about one teaspoon. Next, you're gonna add one teaspoon of chili powder. Oh, got a little too much there. Next, you're gonna add one teaspoon of Worcestershire, one teaspoon of that sauce. <laughs> then add one teaspoon of Tabasco sauce in it. Now that seems like a lot, but it actually isn't too spicy. If your kids are funny about spice, maybe do a half teaspoon. Then on top of that, I'm gonna add one small chopped onion. Next, add one chopped red pepper. Now they didn't have red peppers at my store, so I used an orange one. Then one can of drained black beans. Then you're gonna add one can of corn. You're not gonna drain the corn, dump everything in. Next, add two cups of your favorite enchilada sauce. Then you're gonna add four cups of chicken broth. Now I love to get these big containers because I know it's already four cups and I can just dump the whole thing in without measuring. Next, you're gonna add a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper, and then you're ready to cook. If you're doing the Instant Pot, make sure you turn the handle and make sure that the little thing is on sealing, not venting. If you're cooking with a slow cooker, put the lid on and set it for six to eight hours. With the Instant Pot, you're gonna go manual for 20 minutes. Now when it's done cooking, I did a quick release, so that means I pushed it over to venting and let all the steam out. And I'm gonna take the lid off. Oh, it smells so good. Now I'm just gonna find my chicken and shred it. Now with the Instant Pot, it is going to be really hard to hold on to and it will shred very, very easily. Now when you're done shredding your chicken, you're gonna add one half cup of cream and then about a half a cup of sour cream. I might add a little more because I love when it's nice and creamy. Then when you're done with that, stir it in a little bit so the sour cream can melt and the cream will mix in pretty good. Next, you're gonna add two cups of cheddar cheese. Mix it really well until everything is melted and well combined. Now, if you're doing this in the slow cooker, you're gonna do the same exact thing. You're just gonna make sure it's still on low while your sour cream and cheese are melting. When it's all done, I like to serve it with cheese so the cheese is melting, some little tortilla strips, and cilantro on top. And the very last recipe is our beef stroganoff. So I put a little olive oil in the bottom of my Instant Pot, pushed saute, and then I have stew meat that I threw in. Now I'm putting garlic salt, salt, and pepper in there. And now I'm just gonna mix it around so it will sear the meat just a little bit. So I'm gonna let it sear for just about two to three minutes and then I'll add some other things. So on top of the meat, you're just gonna add some onions. I did half of an onion, but you can do a whole onion then add half a teaspoon of garlic or one garlic clove, and then I added a whole container of mushrooms. If you don't like mushrooms, you don't have to add them in, but I love them, so I added a lot. Then you're just gonna mix it all up for a little while while your Instant Pot is still on saute. You'll notice that the Instant Pot recipe is a little bit different than the slow cooker recipe, and we're gonna add two tablespoons of flour right now, and then mix it all together. All right, then we're gonna add one tablespoon of Worcestershire, Worcestershire, however you call it, it's that sauce. One tablespoon of it right on top. And then you're gonna pour three cups of beef broth right on top. And you'll have one cup left if you have a container like that. Keep that because we're gonna put that in later on. 
All right, our food is ready to cook. We're gonna go ahead and put the lid on now. Make sure that it seals tightly and that it's on sealing, not venting. Now, mine is on saute right now, so I'm gonna turn it off. Then I'm gonna push the manual button and go up to 12 minutes. Now, if you're curious about cooking times, I have a little cheat sheet right here, or in the description, I'll send a link so you can go find it there also. Now, usually with me, I like to let it release on its own, but right now we're doing a quick release because I wanna get the noodles in and cooked. Now, as soon as all the pressure is released, go ahead and take off the lid. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. So now I'm gonna add about 16 ounces of egg noodles. Now, when I'm done dumping it in, I'm gonna stir it around a little bit. If there is lots of moisture in there, go ahead and don't add any beef broth, but I felt like I needed just a little bit more, and so I added about a half a cup more of beef broth. So now you're gonna close the lid again, make sure that it's on sealing again, and then we're gonna cook it. So you're gonna have to turn your Instant Pot off again. Then push manual and go down to four minutes. That's how long noodles take to cook. Now when it's all done, I did a quick release because my kids were ready to eat and I was starving too. So go ahead and take the lid off. Then you're gonna take one cup of sour cream and just pour it right in. You wanna do this right after the lid is off because it was still gonna be really hot. Now go ahead and mix in your sour cream. Now if you noticed, mine has a little bit more liquid than I would like. You can go ahead and keep the saute button on and it will thicken up because of the flour that you put in there. All right everyone, thank you so much for joining me. Now, I'm gonna see you in about a month. Make sure you tune in while I'm gone. Say hi to the sisters and my mom. And yeah, I'll be back with a little baby. Okay, I'll see you guys later, bye.